GLP 1s are everywhere. You've probably seen articles, TikToks, Reddit threads, all buzzing about these drugs. Or maybe you know someone who's taking one. Either way, if you're like me, you can't help but wonder what's the catch. For many, the answer is simple, side effects, but the reality is there's a lot more to GLP-1 side effects than meet the eye. With the life-saving possibilities of these drugs, it's important not to write them off without fully understanding what they're really doing to the human body. So I sat down with Dr. Camila rubio Patino to decode what these side effects really mean. Camila is a biologist with a PhD in biomedicine. She has over 15 years of experience in research in cell biology, molecular biology, and oncology. And additionally, Camila is a GLP-1 user. Thank you for sitting down with us and talking about side effects. We're gonna talk about all the different side effects that people are talking about online, and people are very interested, they're concerned, because there's this wide range, and some of them are very common, and some of them are pretty rare. So I'm 26, and I'm taking it because I have type two, but the nausea is killing me. Just a few minutes ago, I finally threw up for the first time on it. So GLP-1s, a lot of people associate them with different side effects. Can you tell us what those side effects are? Well, we have nausea, we have diarrhea, some people will experience constipation, you know, everyone's different. And why does the side effects happen? GLP-1s directly act over the gastrointestinal tract. And what they do is that they slow down the speed at which the tract is digesting food. So that's why you feel less hunger, and that's why you will get sometimes nausea, you will get constipation, diarrhea, etc. Nausea is definitely one of the, of the side effects that almost everyone will experience. The statistics say that it's 25 to 44 percent of the people that will experience nausea, so that's quite a big number. It's supposed to happen because your body is getting used to the medication and the way it works. So, it should go away after a few weeks. When dealing with this one, it's very important to hydrate. Um, that will definitely help. In my specific case, it was I didn't need to ramp it up because I already drank a lot of water, but it became obvious why I needed to do it. And it's very important to drink water. Yeah. What about diarrhea, constipation? Kind of two sides of the same not great coin. 20 to 30 percent of people may experience diarrhea, and you can get one or the other or both throughout the process. It can last for about six weeks, but there are things that you can do to help that out. For constipation, we have a few things that we can do to try to make it better. Lots of fiber, liquids, the type of foods that you're eating. With diarrhea, being very careful with the hydration or if you have vomiting also, you need to be quite careful with how much water you're drinking throughout the day to avoid dehydrating. And vomiting is definitely not something anybody wants to have happen, but these are the common side effects of this medicine. Yes. Vomiting also, being careful of the amount of food you're eating, what type of foods you're eating, smaller portions throughout the day. There are little things that you can do to try to make it better. Good hydration, eating right, exercise, these aren't new things. You've heard this before. The new thing is GLP-1. We heard these tips in health class in high school, but this new drug technology, it just makes it a bit easier to follow that advice and get results. You don't just lose weight or manage diabetes, but you can manage the side effects of that semaglutide assist as well if you follow these same tips we've heard forever. Interesting. Finally, I've heard something that a lot of people are mentioning, and that's fatigue. Fatigue on GLP-1 medication is so real. If you guys are new here, my name's Alexis, and I've lost 30 pounds in the last 13 weeks on terzepatide. Ever since moving up to five milligrams of terzepatide, I have just been one tired girl. Is that a common side effect? I would say it is, and it kind of makes sense. If you're eating less, even though you don't feel hungry, your body has less nutrients to provide energy. Mm. If you eat less and your body is used to having extra energy all the time because we eat more than we need usually in our culture, and now you're eating less, of course you're gonna feel fatigue. What I thought was unrelated medical condition relates to my gallbladder. Earlier this year, I had my first ever gallstone pain. There's seven or eight little gallstones in there. Now, gallstones runs in my family. I'm genetically predisposed to it. The way that Manjaro works can make you more predisposed to gallbladder attacks. 
gallbladder symptoms seem much more serious, but also much more rare. Yes, that's the case. Gallbladder-related secondary effects can happen in around 1-2% to of the patients. The effects on the gallbladder come from the same reason than on the GI tract, and it's the fact that it's slowing down its normal function, the emptying, the motility of the gallbladder. And that's why you get the secondary effects. Yeah. Yeah, we mentioned hydration several times earlier. Some people end up getting dehydrated, which is a not so common side effect as well. Hydration is very important if you're vomiting and if you have diarrhea, of course, but obviously it will also help any of the other secondary effects that we're talking about. I um, have had bouts of acid reflux here and there, especially when I was pregnant, and then it went away and then it comes back and it comes away and it comes back. However, it's come back with an vengeance. And my primary care doctor seems to think that it is the anti-obesity medication that I'm taking. So for me, the biggest problem or the biggest side effect was the acid reflux, more than nausea or constipation or diarrhea. I fortunately didn't have to deal with those. It was hard because that really meant that I needed to change my diet in order to keep that in, you know, under control. Also, you know, you have to modify your, your lifestyle habits, spicy, something you should avoid. Yeah, I really like spicy food. That would yeah. be hard. Alcohol consumption is something that you may not be able to do too much. And that was my case. That helped a lot with the acid reflux. The side effects of the Ozempic gave me pancreatitis. The pancreatitis caused me to vomit uncontrollably. When she stopped taking the drug and returned home from hospital, she quickly put weight back on. I'm quite ashamed of this. At one point, I actually went back on Ozempic because I hated how much weight I had regained. So what would you say to somebody who had this experience? It is definitely shocking. I felt sorry for her, of course, because it's quite a, it's a very serious condition, but what shocked me the most was the fact that she went twice. But pancreatitis, it is a life-threatening condition. But thankfully, it is very rare when on GLP-1 agonist treatment. Every single type of therapy or medicine that you may take, there is always risks. That's something that we need to remember. There's no risk, zero treatment. And that's why it's very important to always have the follow-up of a medical doctor. If you have higher risk of developing any of these serious side effects, that you can ha you know, react at the right time fast enough. Yeah, the GLP-1 is... Um, modifying a large portion of our body with the, the GI tract. And we are still learning what GLP-1s are doing because it does touch absolutely almost everything in the body. There are GLP-1 receptors everywhere, so it's important to keep that in mind. So I was three months in and everything was going great till I went for a monthly checkup and I did an ultrasound for my thyroid and they found out I had a nodule that was 1.58 centimeters and the doctor told me to immediately stop and do a biopsy. What does that make you think? Because that, that, to me, and that sounds kind of scary. There are studies, preclinical studies in mice, that have shown that there is a correlation between the use of GLP-1 and thyroid cancer. But mice and humans are very different. The latest results in human studies haven't shown any correlation between GLP-1s and thyroid type of cancers. We need to always keep in mind that even though Animal work is very important in research. We are very different from them, and sometimes things don't translate from the one to the other. This has been really helpful, and side effects are the main thing that people are worried about. But it sounds like they come mainly from the GI tract, which is manageable. And so when people go and look up side effects, what would you tell them? It definitely helps to know what to expect instead of being surprised. And there is so much data showing what you can expect as secondary effects that you can literally find it anywhere. Go read, research a little bit, and make smart decisions with your doctor. Before we wrap up, I wanted to hear your thoughts. When do you think we'll know more about GLP-1s? I feel like the real world evidence is super important here. Now people are taking it, a lot of people are taking it, and in a few years from now, we're gonna have all of this data coming out, what their results were, what was the, the impact on health, and I feel like that's when we're gonna start knowing even more. Thank you for taking the time to talk to our audience today about all of these different side effects. I'm sure they're gonna feel a lot better just having this information, knowing that many of these things are manageable or how rare they are. So thanks for sitting down with us. Thank you for having me.
Thanks for watching. Which side effect surprised you the most? And what are your biggest questions about GLP-1s moving forward? Leave a comment below with your thoughts. And if you found this video helpful, do us a favor, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. Also, you don't miss the latest videos from Shapeshifting. Of the nine million people in the US with a GLP-1 medication prescription, nearly half are using it for weight loss. So Zempic and Wagovi have slimmed down Hollywood stars and millions of non-celebrities worldwide. They promise up to a 15% reduction in body weight.